and we talked about our responsibilities to the state or to the nation or to the local council or to the community or the, even the world at large and we concluded by saying that every Christian must carry out their Christian responsibilities of holiness, of righteousness, of seeking perfection in the sight of both God and man. And we should also exercise the responsibility of not being weary in well doing. Be minded and mindful that whatsoever a man soweth to a child, soweth to a woman, soweth that would the person be, according to Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. And we gave homework on what Christian responsibilities are in the house of God. And we said to also cover five other Christian responsibilities that we are not mentioned in our class of last week and the homeworks we are supposed to be submitted in today's exercise. I have told myself not to stress myself about the homework, seeing the general collective attitude of this class. So when we finish, by the time we finish lesson 18, we will know whether the homework has any implication or not, and take it from there. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lesson 10 is faith. Tonight, on this lesson, we will deal with the lesson on faith. And our memory verse is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him, him here being God. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is, and that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's our memory verse. You do where to memorize it. You do where to write it down. You do where to note it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Other supporting text of scripture is taken from Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 10. And again, Hebrews 11, verses 1 to 10. Let us quickly look at Matthews. Matthew, not Matthews. Matthew, really. Matthew 8, verses 5 to 10. Now read. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion besieging him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the past previously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but seek the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Verse 9, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. Verse 10. When Jesus had it, verse 10. When Jesus had it, he marveled and say to them that follow, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. So this man's faith was commended, and the Lord cited that even in Israel was not such a faith found as at that point in time. So faith always brings commendation from God. Faith always arrests, quote unquote, God's attention faith always elicits the best of God in any situation or circumstance. 
And as we shall reiterate going forward, the Bible says, without faith, no person can please God. So anything you are doing without faith, including attending this class, does not count with God. It's God. So introduction. The Christian walk is a faith walk, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is to a Christian what oxygen is to life. Faith is the life force behind a Christian. The direct need and duty of a Christian is to please God. And it is through having faith that the believer can please God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11 says, If one lack faith in God, then the essence of one's Christianity is defeated. If we lack faith in God, the essence of our Christianity is defeated. May our the essence of our Christianity never be defeated in the name of Jesus. Amen. So sometimes in despair, in trying circumstances, you may hear people cry or wail and say, Where is God? Such cries. Too excusable, God knowing what He knows about us and being so compassionate. Those sort of cry can be indicative of a lack of faith because the Bible says, as we have just read in Hebrews 11, 6, that whoever comes to God must believe that God is. So if we believe that God is, then the question of where is God does not arise because God is, and in fact, is only present as we already know. So let's look at some facts about faith. In no particular order, but I will number them. Number one, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We find that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is so important, so essential, so what shall I say, that is one of those rare words that the Bible offers its own definition of, so that we may not rely solely on English dictionary or on human definition. So faith is one key word that the Bible offered its definition of, so as not to leave us with human speculation, with human guess guesses, with human conjunctions, with human philosophy or human knowledge or whatsoever. So faith is defined in the Bible itself in Hebrews 11 verses 1 to 2 or particularly verse 1 it says there Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it the elders obtained a good report. I will come back to this definition, but let me continue with some facts about faith. We will come back to this definition because in my view and opinion and experience, if that's anything to cite, our understanding of faith we be very, very much impactful to how well and how far we get on with our Christian faith, including our Christian responsibility, Christian behavior, Christian attitude, Christian domini dominion, and etc. So faith, facts about faith, number one, faith is the substance of things, so for the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11, 1. Though faith is intangible, Substantial results are generated out of faith or from faith. This is not achieved or realized by physical senses. So faith is, does not reside in our physical senses. It is the substance of the unseen. It is the untouchable, the inaudible, of what is felt or internalized. Though it manifests in the physical, it is not seen with the physical eyes, but seen with spiritual eyes and felt in the mind for the just shall live by faith number two faith is an obedient action in response to god's word genesis 6 22. let's quickly look at genesis 6 22. hopefully you brought your bible 
But if you didn't, I have no way of telling that is between you and your conscience, hopefully between you and God. Genesis 6, 6 22 says, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So faith is an obedient action in response to God's word. So we see in this Genesis 6, 22 that all God commanded Noah, Noah did. So Noah showed faith by doing that which God has asked him to do. Also, we see an example in God and in God's creation where as a result he preserved them. Genesis 8, verses 17 to 19. Abraham also did the same by departing from his father's house when God asked him to do so or instructed him to do so. At 75 years, he left Haram. We see that in Genesis 20, chapter 12, verses 1 to 5. In obedience to God, later he went ahead to heed God's directive to sacrifice Isaac is only a long-awaited son, as we see in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 19. Another fact about faith, number three actually, is faith advances a believer beyond the five senses of seeing, hearing, testing, smelling, and touching. So things that you cannot engage with by your five senses are best engaged with by your faith. The word of God should produce faith, the force needed for exploit. So another word for faith is the force needed for exploit in the heart of a believer and not in our heads or eyes of a believer. Number four, fact about faith. Faith involves taking a chance, takes a chance. However, taking a chance on God is not a gamble. God is faithful and sure to prove himself in the lives of believers. We see example with the three Hebrew children or boys demonstrated active faith in God and the fourth man appeared in the fairy furnace and delivered them. Daniel chapter 3 verses 14 to 18. Number five factors of facts about faith. Faith is confident anticipation based on the knowledge of who God is. So when you have a, con a confident anticipation based on your knowledge of who God is, you are actually in faith, working in faith, exercising faith. Number six, fact about faith. Faith is acting on the strength of what we are convinced about, that God will be for us what we know he is and that he will do for us what he says he will do. So when we act on the strength of what we are convinced about God, of his nature and person, of his promises and his ways, then we are walking in faith or living in faith or acting in faith. Faith, number seven fact about faith. Faith is the bedrock of Christianity. So those are the facts about faith. I will pause at this juncture and ask for any questions, any remark, any contribution. And let me just say, in the past, I used to share every of these messages recorded. It is recorded for people to revisit it and refresh themselves of it. It is not recorded so that people will not attend this foundation class. So henceforth, whoever does not attend any session will not accept on exceptional grants or basis or reason, will not be given the taped messages. The era of COVID has passed and anybody who wants to live in COVID should live in COVID to him or herself. We have come out of COVID. You cannot come out of something and want to benefit from it. The era of COVID is past. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, any questions so far on what faith is, on the facts about faith, before we progress? No, sir. Who? Suppose you're speaking for everyone then. 
Next, we want to move on to what is the basis of our faith? What is the basis of our faith? Basis means ground. The basis of our faith is threefold. Our faith as Christians is based on threefold realities. Number one, our faith is based on the nature of God. We see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians, if you have your Bible, please kindly turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, it says there, God is faithful, by whom ye we are called unto the fellowship of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. By the way, for those who might or might not know, the word faithful is a compound word, even though it has so marked and fused that it's become a single word. What faithful means is to be full of faith. Faithful means to be full of faith. So it used to be full of faith before it became one word, faithful. So if you're faithful, you are full of faith, whether secularly, or in Christian context, but we are consigned with faith as Christians. And the basis of our faith as Christians are threefold. It's based one on the nature of God, i.e., that God cannot change. Malachi 3 6, James 1 17, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 10 to 12. God cannot change. So that fact, that reality, that truth is a foundation is an anchor is a basis of our faith so we are not dealing with somebody who tomorrow blows hot the other time blows cold we are not doing with some dealing with somebody who is unpredictable such that when you want to rely on them they are neither available or they are neither willing to be relied on we are dealing with a God who cannot change. Unlike me, unlike you, unlike anybody, we are dealing with a God who cannot change. That's the basis of our, fan, of our faith. Another basis of our faith within the nature of God is that we are dealing with a God who cannot fail. God cannot fail. And I will personally share with you why the fact or the truth that God cannot fail transcends you and I. So sometimes we think the world revolves around us. We think that God is God because we are. Without us, God is not God, which is, of course, the, one of the classic lies of the devil. Because God has been God before you and I were created. God has been God before the heavens and earth were created. So with or without, the existence of the cosmos or humanity, God will still be God. God cannot fail. So it transits you and I. God cannot fail. It's not about us. God cannot fail. Number three is that God cannot lie. God cannot lie. So that's another foundation and basis of our faith. So in terms of the nature of God, God cannot change, God cannot fail, God cannot lie. That is one number of the basis of our faith. The next basis of our faith is the redemptive, redemptive work of Jesus Christ. The redemptive work of Jesus Christ, which includes his incarnation, his gestation in the womb of Mary, his birth, his growing up, his ministry, his... Um, you know, false judgment at the throne of Herod, his crucifixion, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension back to glory. Those 33 odd years he walked on earth constitute his redemptive work. So our faith is based on those. They are historical facts, they are biblical facts. Our faith is based on those. So when we are dealing with the Bible, the aspect of Jesus' ministry, we are not dealing with some philosophy or something. We are dealing with something that happened, as Nigerians we say, with the Kuro -Kuro eyes of human beings. 
number third basis of our faith is the word of god matthew 24 verse 35 jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 isaiah chapter 40 verse 8 first kings chapter 8 verse 56 the word of god so let me just recap there are threefold basis of our faith our faith is based on the nature of god our faith is based on the redemptive work of jesus christ our faith is based on the word of god why is faith important another subheading one of the reasons why faith is important is god is a faithful god everything god created was created by faith he spoke the word into existence god calls things that are not as though they were romans 4 17 so if god is a faithful god and we are his children then we must be faithful children alike we have to be like our father god otherwise we are imbecites and bastards spiritually speaking and even well beyond that another reason why faith is important is that salvation is by faith the new birth is obtained by faith in god the bible says in ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 that for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourself it is the gift of god when something is true something t-h-r-o-u-g-h true it means that thing is a bicycle if i say i am going somewhere through somewhere it means it's a root it's a bicycle it's a means to an end so faith is a vehicle of our salvation Without faith, our salvation cannot be delivered to us because there will be no vehicle from God to us. And somebody has put it this way, that grace is God's hand holding on us or extended to us, and faith is our own hand holding on to God. So when you see a couple walking on the street, especially amongst the Caucasians, you will see them holding hands. Each is holding the other. It's only a child that you will hold. A child will not hold you back because you are dragging the child to school. They don't want to go. Or you are dragging them out of somewhere. They don't want to go. The two adults demonstrate respect and two work together except they agree. Two adults are holding themselves, you see. Two adults are holding hands, you see, that they are holding themselves. And that's the way God wants to work with us. God wants us to be holding him as he's holding us. He holds us with grace. We hold him with faith. Number three reason why faith is important is that the victorious Christian life is lived by faith in God, Romans 1, 17. Another thing is healing is by faith, Matthew 9, 22, 22. Miracles, signs and wonders, breakthroughs, all these things are by faith. Yes, there are dimensions and examples of these things arising with or without the faith of somebody. Like for example, the case of Lazarus. Lazarus was dead. Dead people don't have no faith, if I'm to speak like an American. Jesus came by the womb and he says, Lazarus, come forth. So God can do some things with or without your faith. But if you are a living woman being and you refuse to do show faith, then your faith, if AT is in your hands, God may or may not come through for you. But if you are as dead as Lazarus, whether metaphorically or in reality, then nobody can logically or reasonably express you to exercise faith when it will be totally up to God and down to God how he deals with you in the matter. But if you're a living Christian, you've got to have faith in one measure or the other, even if your faith is as little as that of a mustard seed, which we may or may not talk about on this class today. The whole life and daily business of a Christian should be based on total and constant dependence on God. God wants us to be dependent on Him. We are not in a formal nature to be independent of God. Not in our fallen nature, not in this depraved world, nor with the mad devil roaming up and down. You and I cannot afford to be independent of God. For our own good and for the glory of his name, we must be dependent on God. Next, why faith is important, we cannot please God without faith. Hebrews 11, 6. 
The Bible drives on the importance of faith by affirming that anything done outside of faith is sin. Romans 14, 23 says, For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Singing, dancing without faith, sin. Praying without faith, sin. Preaching without faith, sin. Reading Bible without faith, sin. Coming to a church without faith, sin. Whatever is not done with faith is sin. Bible says it in Romans 14, 23. So check yourself. Faith gives us the strength to keep going. Second Chronic, sorry, First Chronicles 29, 12. Second Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. Romans 8, 11. Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Jude, verse 24. Does anybody know why I say Jude verse 24? Yes, why? Because that's just one chapter. Brilliant. God bless you. Yes, because Jude has only one chapter. Amen. So, um... Another reason why we need faith or why faith is important is justification is by faith. Can somebody tell us what justification means in English language? Um, eh? Yes, it's open book. You can Google the meaning. You can pick up your dictionary if you have one. I know in this, in this day and age, people don't have dictionaries. To share. Yes, go on. Vindication grounds, basis. Justification. Yes, go on. What does justification mean? The action, the action of, of show, showing something to be right or reasonable. Brilliant. Thank you, my dear. God bless you. Yes, <laughs> you are correct. Justification. You're excused. You are, you are acquainted. You are, you are applauded as right and not wrong. You, yeah, you are deemed or uh, claimed as right. You have no, you have not erred, you've not done anything wrong in any matter or case under consideration. So that's what justification is. And in Romans chapter 3, verse 28, it says, Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So it is through faith that we are justified. We are deemed righteous. We are deemed to no longer be sinners. It is through faith we are deemed to be saints. I hope we know what saints mean. Amen? Saint means sinlessness, a state of sinlessness. So if you are saint, and by the way, if you're genuinely born again, you are saint, irrespective of your flaws every now and then. So long as you're not decisionally, decisionally living in sin. You are sent. That's what the Bible says. Whether you believe it or not, it is true. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you. So, we are justified by faith. It's our faith that cleanses us. Our faith in the finished work of the cross of Calvary. Our faith in the forgiveness of God. Our faith in the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. Our faith in the Word of God, in God's goodness. Those are the things that justifies us, that makes us sinless, that makes us right with the Father and right before the Father. Just as Sister Ruby has defined what justification is. It's our faith that makes for that. Our faith also, what is faith important? Faith makes for purification. Our purification is by faith. We see that in Acts of Apostles, chapter 15, verse 9. Our faith is by purification. 15, 9 says, And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. So our heart is purified. If your heart is full of filthy thoughts, full of pride, full of arrogance, full of malice, 
full of ego, full of all manner of the, 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 the fruits of the flesh. The thing to purify it is faith in God. When you put faith in God, that God can do and that what God cannot do does not exist, then your heart becomes cleansed. But if you put your faith on a on what is it on the motivational speakers you put your faith on positive thinking you put on faith on philosophy you put your faith on some kind of uh, human abracadabra you will be stuck where you are you will not go anywhere praise the name of the lord hallelujah so sanctification is by faith as well Acts of Apostles. I hope we talked about sanctification. It was one of our lessons in the recent past. You can revisit the audio record for that if to refresh your mind and memory on it. Sanctification is by faith. We see that in Acts of Apostles, chapter 26, verse 18, wherein it says, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. You see, those that say Satan has no power, it is written here blatantly in the scriptures, as 26, from the power of Satan. So Satan has power. So if you have come from any church or you are in a neighborhood of any church that is telling you Satan has no power, you better show them from the Bible that the Bible said, come from the power of Satan. If Satan has no power, the Bible will not say, come from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. So sanctification is by faith that is in me and that faith is in Christ Jesus. Sanctification is by faith. Why is faith important? Because faith leads to salvation. We've talked about that before. Why is faith important? Because it is by faith that believers receive power. Say power. 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 Amen. And like power because you can do little or nothing without power. Power doesn't always mean muscle. There is intellectual power as well. There is emotional power. If you are emotionally strong, then you cannot be rattled or tossed about. If you are intellectually strong, then you cannot be taking ride of influence by all manner of unfriendly friends and companies. You will be the influencer yourself what God wants for us to be influencers, influencing the world and not being influenced by the world. Mark chapter 16, verses 16 to 17 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17, And these shines shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak. Verse 18, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. These are all by faith. How can we obtain faith? This is the cruise of the matter. How can we obtain faith? You can't get it from going to stay school. It's not so that sense grace or at any corner shop. We obtain faith by studying the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 7. Romans 10, 7 says, Or who shall descend into the deep? Sorry, Romans 10, 17, not 10. Romans 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So that is how we obtain faith. We obtain faith by studying the word of God. And you must study the word of God until you hear it. Can anybody explain that to me? What I've just said. Until you hear the voice of God. Yes. I study the word. Study until you hear. Yes. Yes. Because if you are studying and you are not yet hearing, you can have more faith. Faith comes by hearing. It didn't say by reading. Hearing and hearing the word of God. So your reading the word of God is a means to your hearing the word of God. So you read the word of God with the objective to hear 
the world. Because hearing the word is hearing God. So when you are reading the Bible, you are reading what is called logos. Anybody heard about that word logos? When you hear, you will hear what is called rema. So the word of God is made up of two components, not particularly in any whole proportion. Logos and rema. The logos is what is the text what we carry about in the Bible book. When we read the Legus, then we end up with the Rema. And that is what brings about faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God, not by reading. No, you read to hear. So don't end up with reading. Read to hear. The reading is the means to hearing. The reading is not your end goal. The reading is not your objective. When you just read to tick the boss, you are being legalistic and religious. It will not take you far. You read with the objective, with the aim, with the longing, with the anticipation, with the aspiration, with the hunger, with the test to hear. Then when you hear, faith will arise. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that's how we obtain faith. Another way we obtain faith is by praying for it. You pray for it. You pray for it. Let's quickly look at Mark chapter 9. Yes, Apostle Jeremiah said, Tell them, let them hear. Tell them, maybe they will listen to you. <laughs> Mark chapter 9, verse 24 say, And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief, which is give me faith. So you can cry out to God for faith. We also see in Luke chapter 17 Luke chapter 17 verse 5 says and the apostle said unto the Lord increase our faith increase our faith so faith can come by asking God that is prayer pray instead of lamenting some certain issues once you by discernment, by wisdom, by understanding, by knowledge, see that what is the actually the problem here is faith. Then say, God, give me faith. Because once you have faith, you can move the mountain. So the mountain is not the problem per se. The real problem is that you haven't got the appropriate matching faith to push that thing away. So rather than think the mountain is the problem, Sometimes it could be the problem. I'm not saying it's not always a problem. But we'll get to that. If you find out that the real, the root problem, the real, what they call, gone, gone. Is that how they say it, Sister Ruby? Gone, yeah. gone. The, the gone, gone problem is faith. Not the mountain is faith. They say, God, give me faith. Because once you have faith, you will move the mountain. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's where corporate prayers and having fellowship with other people come in. It's like, you know, let me give you a practical human, human life example. Let's say in your home or in the office or something or in the wherever, you want to move a desk. Let's say you want to move a chair. Sometimes, or a stool. Yeah, a stool. Or a, yeah. The stool might be so light, you just carry it by yourself and you move it and go and put it where you want to put it. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Now, if you want to move a big table, let's say a boardroom table or a big desk, is that something you'll be able to do just by yourself? Yeah. You will ask for help. You get somebody to do that. So Jesus says, if you don't understand the physical things, you will not understand the spiritual things. So there are things in the spirit or a problem that you might not be able to lift all by yourself. So rather than make allow your ego to keep you struggling with something, why don't you confide in somebody 
whose Christianity you can trust. It doesn't have to be pastor. In fact, I don't even want to be overlevered. Moses says, I wish that all of us were pastors and prophets. Amen. So I'm not, I'm not conversing for everybody to be coming to me. So you go to somebody and you say, let's have a prayer of agreement. The Bible says, one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. They call it synergy, which is defined in the business world. Synergy is that what can be accomplished by a number of people is much more than what can be accomplished by the sum of their individual efforts. So if you have 10 people working individually at something without cooperation, without collaboration, without team, team spiritedness, what they will accomplish individually if you add it up, one, two, three, four, five, six, to ten effort, you add it up. It will be less than what if they collaboratively work on that thing. It's called synergy. If you are not acquainted with that word, you can Google it and find it. I knew that word right from when I was a young man. So I expect that everybody knows what synergy is. So that also happens in the spirit. You can synergize your faith with those of others and deal with your problem. You can synergize rather than struggling with something that your own faith alone cannot, cannot hack it. Your own faith alone cannot shift it. Your own faith alone can't even dent it. And you're there because of your ego. You don't want to ask for help. You don't want to ask for assistance. Or because of your self-imposed isolation. You don't want to seek assistance because you are paranoid about what other people will say. Let them say now. Anybody who is backbiting you means they are to your back. If they are not in your back, they cannot backbite you. So for them to backbite you, they are behind you and you are ahead of them. And if you are ahead of them, it means you are better off than them because you are ahead of them. So backbiting is for those behind you, not those that are in front of you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we receive faith by praying for it. Another way we receive faith is by obeying the word of God. James 2.17. James 2.17. James 2.17. It says, even so, faith, if it had not worked, is dead, being alone. So when you are not exercising your faith through obedience to the word of God, because the way to exercise faith is by obeying the word of God. There is no other way to exercise faith. There is no other way. And faith is meant to be exercised. In this country, for example, they love dogs. Most evenings or otherwise, you will see people walking their dogs, yes or no? Yes, sir. Because if you don't exercise that dog, it will become E. Your, your what is it they call it? Uh, this uh, animal doctors, what is it? Called? Veterinary doctors. The charges will increase. You might even go against your animal insurance uh, clauses. Because within the pet insurance, there are clauses that the pet has to be exercised and all that. So you might go against the insurance, which means you can't claim on your insurance. A lot of things will go wrong. So again, I go back to what the Lord Jesus Christ said to us. If you don't understand the physical things, you cannot understand the spiritual things. So people who want to compartmentalize physical life away from spiritual life, they are doing themselves. They are shortchanging themselves. You use the physical world to try to grasp an understanding of the spiritual world. You don't compartmentalize them. They are interwoven because the things of the spirit drive, influence, impart the things of the physical. And the things of the physical can feed back to the things of the spirit to change the dynamics of the things of the spirit. So they are interconnected systems. Now I'm talking from engineering background. You don't have to be an engineer to understand these things. But uh, especially if you're a Christian, you can't understand anything because you have the wisdom of God. And wisdom comes from God. Amen. 
Um, so these things are interconnected. So if you have faith, you have to exercise your faith. If you don't exercise your faith, it will go limp, it will wither, it will shrink, it becomes in a, it's like a car. During the COVID time, some people, I parked one of my cars for almost 15 months. By the time I went to go and started, the car refused to start. I have to do some things, the car, the battery, go and do this. Too. Why? Because the car was parked a long time. It's not meant to be parked a long time. It is designed to be driven. So your faith is designed to be used. It's not designed to be kept in a box. So if you exercise your faith, which is what we are trying to, to, to elaborate here, you will gain more faith. Your faith will increase like a muscle. So one way to get faith or to obtain faith is to exercise or use the little that you have. If you use that little, more will be added to you. But if you refuse to use it, even that which you have will be taken away from you. That is the word of God. It's not me. I'm not cursing anybody. I'm just stating what the word of God says. Number four way of obtaining faith is by listening to testimonies of faith. That's why in Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries and in some other churches as well, we create time for testimony. Because when you hear what God has done for people, it might be unrelated to you, to your own problem, but the faith element still remains a principle which you can draw upon to kickstart your own faith or sustain or enhance or, or increase your faith in whatever you are going to and push through to your moment and time of breakthrough. So in recapping, how do we obtain faith? We obtain faith by studying the word of God. We obtain faith for, by praying for it. We obtain faith by obeying the word of God, which is exercising what faith we already have. Then we obtain faith by listening to testimonies. Amen. Now we go into another subtopic. It says, what is the reward of faith? Well, the reward of faith is that God is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11.6 We can appropriate all the promises of God in the Bible through faith alone. Through faith, we have access to God. Romans 5.2 We have access to God through faith. We have access to God through faith. Hebrews 4 verse 16 Through faith also, we experience God's love. We experience God's love by faith. Through faith also, as a reward, we have righteousness and purity. It is also by faith that we know that the Holy Spirit lives in us. It's also as a reward of faith that we have protection against the devil's lies and the devil's attacks. Ephesians 6.16. Let's quickly look at that. Ephesians 6.16. Ephesians 6.16 It says, above all, taking the shield of faith. So we see that faith, the reward of faith is that it's a shield. I hope we understand what the shield is. Okay. Yeah, think of it like a bulletproof vest. Any of you seen a bulletproof vest before? Yes. Yeah. You used to be in the army. <laughs> so, above all, taking the shield of faith, we are with we shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked. So we use the shield of faith to quench the fairy darts of the wicked. All his attacks, whether it be gossip, whether it be malingering of against us, whether it be uh, spirit wife, spirit husband, whether it be tormented, is the shield of faith you use to quench it. It's your bulletproof. So faith, I mean, what can I say? Faith is indispensable. Without faith, no man can please the Lord. And I will quickly come back to, which I promised us earlier on, to definition of faith, because um, it's not that you people don't like assignments. Uh, so that is also affecting what you, how much you can get out of these things. Uh, let's progress. So, we use faith, our reward of yes. Anyone wants to? We like assignment too. Who is that? 
That seems like an unfamiliar voice. Who said that? Is it Sister Dami? Uh, yes, <laughs> okay. Anyway, anything is possible. With God, all things are possible. Sister Daya, I haven't heard your voice much today. Are you okay? Your, yes, eh? sir. Yes, sir. Okay, because I love to hear your voice as well. Why are you going on mute even before you finish saying something? Are you in a are you in a restaurant enjoying yourself? Praise <laughs> the Lord. Hallelujah. No, so part of our reward of um, faith is that it brings us great reward in heaven. John 14, 1 to 3. Let's quickly look at John 14, 1 to 3. I like things about heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't even mind if we all go, if those that want to go all go today. Amen. Heaven. Yes. Mm-hmm. You don't like? I like, sir. Okay. It's not the one that there's one GBT man in Nigeria. He took 310,000 from each of his members to take them to heaven. Uh huh. Yes, it's been in the news now. You know, it's in Nigeria that they carry last. <laughs> I don't know whether it's going to buy them Nigerian Airways ticket. I don't know which flight that is going there for 310,000 people are paying this is well yes Nigeria is another thing (laughs) sometimes it's good like that because sometimes human beings don't like free things you give them free things they will think it's uh, rubbish but when you say pay ah then they will say yes this thing must be rich now because must be original. They go and borrow money and pay. <laughs> How are they gonna feel when they find out that it's not? Like them? Mm, they are, they are, they are deceived in a spirit of deception. Seen the news now. It was carried by Channel News. Far they are even asking the, the governor of the state is one of the southwestern states to send DSS and police and all that. <laughs> Meanwhile, the people that pay him the money are not complaining. It's nosy journalists that are complaining. It's not the members. So the member has not complained because they call him daddy and are forced to. And they are content that people should just leave them alone. <laughs> yeah, no, they should leave them alone. Nobody their money. They borrow money from anybody. Hey, no, it's true. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, we are with we shall be able to quench all the very heart of the wicked. Then the great wars in heaven, spiritual strength are all part of the reward. There is a verse of scripture that said, Let us look up. Did I just remind me what it is? Yeah. Eh? That's the what? Uh, great rewards John. in heaven John 14 1 to 3 yes John 14 verses 1 to 3 says let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me so Jesus is saying okay you believe in God but you've got to believe in me also so you see some people believe in God but they don't believe in Jesus it is incomplete belief it is an erroneous belief it is a faulty belief. It is a skewed belief. So if you run into anybody that still believes in God but doesn't believe in Jesus, just ask them that. Let me help you complete your belief. Hmm? Let me help you complete your belief. John 4, uh, verse 2, 14 to, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again 
and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may also be. Verse 4. And whither I go, ye knew, and the way ye know. So we get great rewards in heaven through faith. We get spiritual strength as a reward of our faith. We get stability as a reward of our faith. Now next subheading, the last before we go to conclusion. Say, what are the consequences of not having faith? The consequences of not having faith is that God will hide his faith from a person who has no faith. Deuteronomy 32.20 The consequences of not having faith consequences are so much that not having faith is not an option for you and I. It's not an option. 32 verse 20 says, And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. <laughs> Yeah, tell them, tell them, tell them, let them hear. Amen. Deuteronomy 32, 20. See, brother, the man has already echoed it now. You know, children just recently came from heaven. Amen. So they have not forgotten things like most of us adults that came from heaven some centuries ago. And we don't even have any remembrance. So when he echoes something, he means he remembers it. So pay attention now. Amen. Especially Sister Fola can we pay attention. Amen. So, God is saying in Deuteronomy 32, verse 20, that if people have no faith, he will hide his face from that person or individual or people. That's a consequence of not having faith. Another consequence of not having faith is that we, are not, we will not be established. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9. Another consequence of not having faith is that such a person will not receive from God. James 1, 6 to 7. Somebody that doesn't have faith will not receive from God. Except you are as dead as who? A word. Yes, dead as Lazarus. Dead men cannot have faith. So there is always the exception. But if you are not as dead as Lazarus, you have to show faith to sometimes people can show faith on your behalf, Sha. But in this England that people are so self-centered. If you're waiting for people to show faith on your behalf, you'll be in big trouble. It's not like Nigeria, people can believe for you. So Nigerians can be generous with their own faith. They can exercise it on your behalf. But in England, you're on your own. O -O. Yes. James chapter 1, verse 6 to 7 says, But let him ask in faith. That is, whoever wants to ask anything of God should do that in faith. Not wavering means your faith should be solid and strong and established. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of God. So the consequences of not having, having faith or having a wavering faith is that we don't receive from God. God forbid. Another consequences of our not having faith is that we will not see life. John chapter 3 verse 36 b Another consequences of our not having faith is that it will be impossible for such a person to please God. Another consequences of our not having faith is that we will not enter into God's promise or receive God's promise. Hebrews chapter 3, 18 to 19. Of course, these consequences are not exhaustive. The list of them are not exhaustive. But even if it were just one, for me, they are weighty enough. And I don't even want to be in such situation. So that is about that. And um, let me graciously go back to the bonus that I wanted to do with yours today about definition of faith. Can anybody remind us the, the chapter and verse of scripture, the book chapter and verse of scripture that defines faith? Hebrews 11, 6. No. It's not Hebrews 11, 6 now. No, 
not don't fall my hand now. Hebrews 11 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is, and that is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Have you got your Bible there? Hebrews 1. Yes, Hebrews 11 1 is the one that defines faith. Yes, Sister Dami, what does it say there? Sorry. Um, for the evidence of things not seen. Yes. That's uh, now nah, faith is the substance of things hope for the evidence of things not seen. That is the definition of faith. The Bible and biblical definition of faith. We want to expand this now. That's what we want to do. That's the, the bonus I want to give you people because this was a bonus given to me by the Holy Spirit many, many years ago. The first sermon I ever preached in my Christian life was preached from this scripture. And I preached it at... Mm -hmm. many, I can't even remember how many years ago. It was at full was business, like full business gospel fellowship in Lagos. Uh, yes, what are you going to say, ma? Somebody was saying something. The voice sounded like Sister Dami. Sorry, sir. I thought I was uh, muted. Apologies. Okay, so you weren't saying to us, eh? All right, so let's expand in, let's expand verse 111. In order to expand it, what are the words there that you think we should break it down? Hmm. Have you all got your Bible with you? Yes. Okay. Just uh, for this moment, you can switch off the television. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What word in this sentence do you think we should break down? Uh, it's the substance of things hoped for, evidence. Evidence. Yes. What other one? Substance. Good. Um, those are the two words. We need to break down those two words. We need to break them down. So how are we going to break down the word substance? To break down the word substance, we need to go to the dictionary. Does anybody want to give us a definition or a synonym for the word substance? Yeah. Substance. Mm. Substance, yes. It's a particular kind of matter with uniform properties. It also means the real physical matter of which a person or thing consists and which has a tangible solid presence. Distill it a bit and and read out the particular bits that you think are relevant or contextual to what we are looking at. The real physical matter of which a thing consists and which has a tangible solid presence. The, Three, yes. most, the most important or essential part of something. The quality of having a solid basis in reality or fact. Yes. 
I hope others you are following, you know. Yes. Good. So, substance, as our sister has very kindly read to us. Is the real physical matter of which a person or thing consists. So substance is the tangible, the way I will say it. Substance in the context of which we are looking, that Hebrews chapter eleven, verse one. Substance is the tangibility of the intangible. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Are you sure it makes sense? Just if it doesn't, just say it doesn't, so we can look at it differently. The tangibility of intangible. The tangibility of the intangible. The tangibility, yes, but of the intangible. Okay. Not okay. Don't accept. Settle for compromise. <laughs> Now we know, as we have read earlier, that faith is intangible. Yes. Are we agreed or do we understand that far? Yes. yes, sir. Okay. Now the scripture says there, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So faith is intangible. But now the scripture is telling us that this intangible faith is the substance of things which we hope for, which means the tangibility of the intangible regarding the things we hope for is called faith. Now, which means, let's go back to the dictionary definition which our sister was looking at for us. Um, now, it means that faith is the real is the real constituent of what we are hoping for. Faith is the real constituent of what we are hoping for. Faith is the tangibility of what we are hoping for. Even though faith in itself is intangible, but when applied to our hope, that tangible faith becomes the tangibility of what we are hoping for. Another dictionary definition of substance is that it is the choicest or the most essential or the most vital part of some idea or experience. So if we plug this then back into the scripture there, it says then that faith then becomes the choicest, the most essential, the most vital of our, of the things that we are hoping for. Is that making any sense so far? Yes. yes, sir. Now, now, if we now uh, bring it a little down to earth, then that most essential, that most vital part of what we are hoping for, then becomes, then becomes what God has said concerning that which we are hoping for. Making any sense so far? Yes, sir. And what God has said about anything, the one-stop shop we have to know and find what God has said about anything is where? The Bible. The Bible. And sometimes when you appear in the Bible, it's not everything in the Bible that is in black and white. If something is not in black and white, or seems to be in the gray area, or seems even to be missing, where then do you go escalate your search to? Anybody? You, you pray about it. Good. Say it with confidence. Say it again. You pray about it. Yes. So when it doesn't seem to be clear in the Bible, you escalate it. To escalate it means you pray about it. You take it to God, to the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the scriptures, to God, who is omniscient, who knows all things. You take it to God. This thing is grace, not clear in the Bible. 
then God will respond to you. And when he responds to you, when he responds to you, your way of connecting with that response has still to be faith. Because first, you must believe that he is, which means that you are escalating it to him. He is means you will, your escalation will hit his entry. You know what they call entry? No. Okay. In the olden days, when the likes of us were boys, when we go to our father's office, they have what they call out tray and in tray. My father was an accountant. So when they bring their file to him, this was before computer and all that, they will put it in the in tray. When he has dealt with it, he will put it in the out tray so that his secretary or PA will come and know that it is in the out tray. They will take it and move it to wherever else it's going to go. So it's a bit like in this day. I think that was even before we knew about email. I don't know if email has been invented. So the in tray is like your inbox. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So you look at your inbox when you come to work and then the one that is art box, I don't know, do they call it art box in email, sent box? You don't look at that because that has been moved. It means it has been actioned, goes to the sent box. And that your sent box will be somebody's inbox or many people's inbox. So when you, when God responds to you before you can receive it, you must be in faith because your faith tells you that God is, which means that word god is he that comes to god must believe that god is means you're coming to god in prayer you must believe that god is in such a way and manner that your prayer will hit his entry or his inbox if your faith wavers or is not there that he is you're already disconnected because if you don't believe he is he is doesn't mean he is as in his physical existence. It means he is as in he will engage with you. He is as in he's awaiting your, your call or your attendance or your appearance. He is as in he will pay attention to me. He is as in he loves me. He is as in he will honor his covenant with me in Christ Jesus. He is as in he will be focused on me. He will be personal with me. So we are not talking about God is in some kind of a, a generalistic thing. It has to be God is as in one-on-one -on -one with you. Are you understanding how faith works now? Yes. yes, sir. So it has to be about you. Because God has the capability that, you know, and that comes into under his so many sins, so many presence, so many potent. God has a capability that if now there are about 7 billion people in the whole world, unfortunately, majority of whom are not Christians, but let's assume that the 7 billion people in the world are all Christians and that they are praying at the same moment. God has the, his own many potence is such that if 7 billion people are talking to God at the same time, he can pay us individual attention simultaneously. Like, let's say now, uh, let's say uh, Brother Wale now. If Brother Wale is in church and I'm talking to Brother Wale at the same time that Sister Folakemi is talking to him and Sister Ruby is talking to him and maybe uh, Brother Jeremiah is singing to him and Sister Dami wants his attention. Do you think Brother Wale is able going to pay attention to all of us at the same time? No. You'll be distracted. You will have to make a choice. But God has the ability that if seven billion people are talking to him at the same second, God can address us personally without any of us distracting him from anybody. Even if the angels are also talking to him at that time. So when you come to God, you must come knowing that God is. That the fact that uh, uh, Pastor Ham is doing what he's doing, that he's not distracting God from attending to you right then. 
you must come in that confidence you must come in that frame of mind you must come in that understanding you must come in that revelation you must come in that confidence that's what it calls about the omnipotent of god means he can deal with things simultaneously consecutively concurrently anyhow you want to you want to put the grammar like god can deal with it that so the substance of things hoped for the tangibility of the intangible rest on the word of god what has god said about the thing that you're hoping for that is the substance of your hope the substance of your hope is not based on your wish the substance of your hope has to be based on god's word with respect to that that's why the bible says faith is the substance of thing you're hoping for what is the substance of what you're hoping for what is the sub is the substance that everybody in church has the same car then that is what you are basing your hope for no you don't base it on everybody has the same thing. you have to base it on the word of god for you your revelation of the word of god so that is the substance of things hope for so your hope your faith is the substance on which your hope is hinged your faith is the substance on which your hope is anchored or anchoring or on which you're anchoring your hope or on which you're hinging your hope or on which you're basing your hope or on which you are relying for your hope and that substance as we are seeing from the dictionary is the choicest the most essential the most vital of an idea or experience and also substance is the real physical matter of which a person or thing consists so faith is that real physical matter of which a thing consists the thing here being your hope am i overflogging it or are we done no you're fine sir okay sister dami yes sir i'm here i'm following okay sister dayo and sister yes sir rita god bless you all sister ruby and sister philippe me brother jeremiah yes, yes sir. sir so that is the first aspect of it now faith is the substance of this hope you see now for those of you looking at your bible you will now see comma what does comma mean it means the sentence is in two halves so we have there with the first half we now want to deal with the second half then we join them back together and we define them again then the second half says that faith is the evidence of things not seen the evidence of things not seen amen amen okay does anybody know what is we know what a heart is isn't it yes sir a heart is a physical organ of a of a creature whether human being or otherwise if you go to the mortuary go for it where they are doing autopsy you will see a human heart if you go to the abattoir where they are killing cow you will see cow heart or where they are killing sheep you will see cow sheep heart even where they are killing chicken i think chicken has heart as well the things that don't have heart are worms worms i don't know whether a snake have heart i have to go with it and check amen now what of mind has anybody seen mind before no sir hmm? no sir okay maybe because you're very young let's ask the other ones that are not so young as you Sister Dami, have you seen mind before? Sorry, so have I seen what did you say? Mind? 
Yes, M I N D. M I N D. No, I've okay. never. Sister Dayo, have you seen mine before? No, sir. Okay. Sister Rita, have you seen mine before? No, sir. Okay. Sister Fulakemi, you have must have seen mine now. Huh? <laughs> brother, brother. Wale. Not at all, sir. So we are all in agreement that mind is not seen and is not seeable. Yes. Yeah. But does it have evidence? <coughs> what do you mean by kind of evidence? So do you have a mind? Yeah, we yes, all do. Sir. We all do. Not to speak for yourself. Can yeah, you I... speak for yourself? Others might say they don't have. What would you, would you start fighting them? Or are you their God? Yeah. Yes. Hmm? Oh, I didn't know that was what you were asking. I thought you said, have I seen mine before? I thought mine was an animal. That's what you're asking, if I've seen mine before. Okay, no, it's not the animal. Mine is what uh, So now that you understand what I'm asking, have you seen mine? That's, I still don't understand what that, what's your question properly. I still don't understand what is less carry on. So. How many did you have? Hmm? Uh, okay, let me put it this way. Every man, people have minds, yes or no? Yes. yes. No, I'm going to deal with uh, Sister Dami that says he has you understood. The human beings have minds, yes or no? Yes. Have you seen the mind of a human being? Have I seen the mind of a human yes. being? Yes. I can't see my, I can't see, I can't read minds. I'm, I don't no, I'm not saying. saying read. The word is not read. I say seen with eye. I've not seen. I've not, I can't see. No. Mm -hmm. Don't change the word from seen to read because <laughs> once you change any word, it can affect the whole context of conversation. So where I'm going is that we have not seen minds. So mind is one of those things that is not seen. And if we look at the last two letters of of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. I'm just giving you an example. I'm not saying that's what is there. So mind is not seen, but we do have evidence that people have mind. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So where I'm going is that things which are not seen can still have an evidence. There can be evidence of things that are not seen or things that are not seeable. So, for a Christian, you cannot rely solely on your physical senses because the reality of creation, the reality of human existence transcends that which your physical senses can discern. And the evidence of those things are available if only an individual opens their heart and mind to receive the evidence. So when people say, uh, I don't believe in this because uh, uh, show me where it is, they are either being silly, naive, rebellious, or whatever, because not a, a practical example now, which I've just shown us and which you can use for any person in that argumentative set is the case of mind. We don't see mind. Mind is not seen, but the evidence of mind is all is is compellingly all over the place. But um, I'm just trying to come from the physical into the spiritual, so that when I hit the spiritual, I will not have lost anybody. So it says, faith is the substance of the not the evidence of the not. Let's go back to the dictionary. What is the meaning of evidence? Proof. Yes. Facts. Come eh? to back. <laughs> truth and facts to back up yeah facts to back up the truth yes it says here an evidence is your basis for your belief or your basis for your disbelief evidence is also knowledge on which to base belief evidence is knowledge on which to base belief this is the context of evidence as a noun 
So you have evidence as a noun, you have evidence as a verb. Let's look at evidence as a noun. Evidence as a noun says your basis for belief or disbelief, your knowledge on which to base belief. It's also an indication that makes something evident. So an evidence is an indication that makes something evidence and we exclude the, the law aspect of it then evidence as a verb means to stand as proof of something something that shows one's behavior that shows one attitude that shows one's external attributes so that's evidence as a verb and we have looked at evidence as a noun if we plug it back into Hebrews 11. So faith is the evidence of things that we do not see. So faith is what proves the things we do not see. Faith is what proves, because we have said evidence is a proof. Somebody even suggested that before I looked at the dictionary. Yes or no? Did we not say that yes. evidence is proof? So evidence is proof he says faith is the evidence of things not seen so faith is the proof of what is not seen so your faith in god is a proof to you of the god that is not seen your faith in god proves god to you because faith is the evidence of things not seen so your faith in god proves God to you. Your faith in God substantiates God to you. So when you don't have faith in God, then God is not proven to you in your life. God is not substantiated in your life. God is not made evident in your life. God is not tangible in your life. God is not real in your life. God is not realized in your life when you don't have faith. God is not realized in your life. So this is one of the high point essentiality of faith. So if we go back to, we don't want to take so much of your time. So I know some of you might be asleep, but I don't get all these things of the Bible. So excuse my reducing graces. Hebrews 11 chapter 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things, so for the evidence of things not seen. So we can now paraphrase it you know the essence of paraphrasing paraphrasing is when you put something in your own words and the one of the essence of paraphrasing is that if you correctly appropriately adequately paraphrase something because it's in your own words you are most on you are least liable to forget it because you have you have chewed it and you have put it in your own words it sticks inside of you that's why sometimes when we read the bible a mark of our understanding is when we are able to rephrase it and paraphrase it back to ourselves especially if we get it correctly by the leading of the holy spirit it sticks with us because it's our own word so if we want to re-paraphrase or paraphrase that's why we now say that faith earlier and i said is the tangibility of the tangible but we now say that faith we substitute all we have learned about substance and then we say things hope for comma and we substitute the things that we have learned about evidence and we say of things not seen does that make any sense is that too convoluted no no <laughs> When you now have done that, this is going to be an assignment for your Christian life. It's not even worthy of me wanting to look at the market. But uh, if you want to converse about it, talk about it, you're very welcome. But this is something I did with my own life, when I say my own life, Christian life, many decades ago. Then when you have done that for yourself, this is what I do when I when I did this several years ago, probably some decades. Then when you have got that, then you will now reread the whole of Hebrews 
chapter 11. So let me give you an example of how to reread it. Even without substance, without uh, breaking down substance and evidence. So I say, okay, number one, verse one. Now faith is the substance of, because now I understand what the substance, what the substance mean. I already have it at my back pocket, the back of my mind and the front of my mind or playing up in my mind. I already know that. So when I read, now faith is the substance of thing hoped for. My understanding of a substance is automatically plugged in inside of me. And I say, now faith is the substance of thing hoped for. The evidence. Now my understanding, because I have researched and studied and tried to understand what evidence is in different contexts, that my understanding is plugged in there. So and I now say faith is the substance of thing hope for the evidence of thing not seen. I capture that one. Then I will fast two, for by it the earth has obtained a good report. By it, it means faith. And I have the mean definition, so I understand this. So I can say by faith, the earth has it. Now, when I come to fast three, I will say, instead of just reading through faith, I will read it like this. Through the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, we understand that the words we are framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen, we are not made of things which do appear. Verse four, by the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Verse 5 By the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God has translated him for before for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God verse 6 but without the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen it is impossible to please him God for he that cometh to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him verse 7 by the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an act to the saving of his heart, by the which he commended the world, and became heir of the righteousness of, of the righteousness, which is by the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Did you get the gist? Yes, sir. Yes. If you're able to read this passage like this, anywhere you see faith, you go back to what is stated in verse 1 and plug it into there, and plug it into there. You will see the verse will begin to float and take on much space inside of your spirit, man. And if you do that prayerfully, you will have a good grasp of what faith is, what God's expectation of you is concerning faith, and what your attitude and disposition and actions and posture should be with respect to faith. This is very optional. We are not obligated to do it, but, uh, and it's not anywhere in our textbook. This is my life experience, which I've just shared with you. This is a very crucial passage of the Bible, if you ask me. Faith, the whole verse, chapter of the Bible, dedicated to the word faith. If you have to understand what substance is, you have to understand what evidence is, then you will very much grasp what faith is and how you can employ it circumstances and situations of life and overcome and eat. Any question, any comment, any objections, you are actually allowed to give objections. You, know, you can say I don't agree. It's within your human rights. Eh? Human Rights Act of 1998.
conclusion from the foregoing, it is very important that a believing Christian maintain the right attitude. If his faith must produce fruit as a believer, let anxiety, worry, depression, sorrow, and impatience be far from you, for they are marks of unbelief. Be confident in your expectation and maintain an atmosphere of praise before God always. We have a couple of questions. They are not assignments. It says, mention four examples of people in the Bible who demonstrated great faith in God. Mention four examples. Moses. Yes. Joshua. Yes. Yes. Gideon. Yes. Abraham. Abraham. Yes, Abraham is actually called the father of faith. faith. Abraham is called the father of faith. The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. Another thing that is peculiar to Abraham is that Abraham hoped against hope. hoped against hope, which means hope was lost. Abraham had hope even when hope was all lost. Hoped against hope. So, yeah, very many thank you for that. Number second question, how does the faith of the old patriarchs compare with our faith today? Do we know what is called the patriarchs? No. Mm. Let me spell it in case I'm not calling it correctly. P A T R I A R O C H S. People like Abraham. Yes. From all the um, the mater the fathers of Abraham. You have patriarchs. You have matriarchs. So patriarchs are a bit like father. These are English words, so you can check it out later on. If I let's check it out now, because I've never checked it out. I've always relied on the Bible because I know it from the Bible. So patriarchs in the Bible are, are the foremost patriarchs in the Bible. There are three of them: Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those are the foremost patriarchs of the Bible. Um, but let's see what the English word is. And you have matriarchs as well, which we include Abraham's wife Sarah. Was okay, is that what it says? Okay, so Patrax in the Bible, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of course, you can include Moses. You can include, yeah, these are fathers of faith. So, Patrax, compare with our faith today. Is the question. I think it's different. You can't compare. And how now? That is what the question is. How does it compare with our faith today? I have no idea. All right. I'll tell you from my own perspective. The way it compares is our faith of today. We have all got plan B. Sometimes we have plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E, plan F, plan G, plus, you know. In their time, they didn't have any plan B. It was either God or nothing. Okay. Their, their faith, we are absolute. It was either God or nothing. Today, we have plan A, plan B. Plan. In short, we have plan B, plan C. Plan. In fact, sometimes we start from our plan Z and walk backwards onto our plan B. When all those plans have all failed us, then we come to God's plan. We don't even start with God's plan. We start from any, any, any we are along the 26 alphabet and walk caps us at the end. When everything has failed us, then we end up with God. And God is looking at us. Thank God for His grace and mercy and compassion. Because actually we end up with God when all other things have failed us. 
and then we are crying and saying, God, we have faith in you. God, we have faith in you. And he's looking at us. You know, you have come here because everywhere I don't fail you, Shabi. Whereas God wants us to be his first point of call and his last point of call. That's why he's the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. God has to wants to be in the beginning of your life and with any issue you're facing and all the way and the way the truth and the life from beginning to end god wants to be in every strata of your life experience and your life as a person not dipping in and dipping out of god we dip in and out of god that's what we do that's why our faith is different from their faith we dip in and out of all of us including myself we all have our alternative to god now of course, we will not want to put it that way. We all have an alternative to God. Yes, we all have our alternative to God. So most of us are actually, and one of these days, when our branch is mature enough, I will preach it. Are you an idolater? I can't preach it now because some people will think I'm talking about them and they will leave the church. Whereas I'm not talking about them. But there's a difference between our faith and the faith of the patriarchs. Number three, divine faith. And back it up with the Bible quotation. We have defined it now. Hebrews 11, 1. So that one is for us. Number four, state three consequences of not having faith. Yes, three consequences of not having faith. You cannot please God if you don't have faith. You may not receive your healing if you don't have faith. You may not be established if you don't have faith. You will not see eternal life as you will end up in heaven if you don't have faith. You will not enter into God's promises or receive it if you don't have faith. Those are three consequences of not having faith and there are other consequences. Prayer points. Lord, increase my faith in you in the name of Jesus. Number one prayer point. Second prayer point. I receive the faith to confront my challenges in the name of Jesus. You can add other prayer points to it and that will be all for tonight. Thank you, brethren, for your magnanimity and kindness and generosity in coming to listen to me on this occasion may the lord bless you and reward to you in the mighty name of jesus tomorrow is church tomorrow is first sunday in the month of may tomorrow is our alakata prayers that is and there will also be a child dedication try and come on time and try and come with your faith and try and come you are too yes who wants to pray sister Folakemi, please pray for us let's stand up and say hallelujah close in jesus name amen, amen. Well, thank you for this time we thank you for this um occasion we had to come and be at your feet in the mighty name of jesus we pray and we ask that everything Will be will make impact in our life mm. and will not just be in the name of Jesus. Mm. Praying that the person you've used for us, Father, enrich him the more in wisdom, knowledge, and in understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know you can serve in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Good night. God bless you. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the ways of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of God forever and ever. Amen. Bye.